Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Actually, good afternoon. Time goes really, really quick around here. Good afternoon. This is Arrows of Deliverance and Faith Ministries. We're just coming in today for our Sunday service. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? We thank and praise God this morning because he allowed us to see yet another day. You're just going to only see me for a couple seconds and I'll bring up our pastor. I just wanted to pray with you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever time zone you're reading this or looking at this or, or enjoying this service, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this day. We give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory. That is due your name, God. We bless your name this morning, God. We will not let another moment, not let another hour, not another second go past, Lord Jesus, without us saying, thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for your grace, which is sufficient. We thank you for your mercy that renews every single morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love and your kindness that draws us. We thank you for opening up our ears and opening up our eyes and opening up our hearts that we can hear from you and see what you want to say to us today, God. Oh, God, we say have your way in this day, God. Oh, God, forget about what happened yesterday, God. Forgive us for what happened yesterday, God. We are tuned in to hear what you have to say. In the name of Jesus, we want to hear your word. We want to hear your message. We want to hear your prophetic word. We want to see your leadership and your guidance. We want you to order our steps. Tell us what you want us to do. Tell us which way you want us to go. Tell us how to live our lives, God, so we can live pleasing in your eyesight, God. Oh, God, we ask that you touch the manservant, Lord Jesus, that you will cover him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, God. Allow him to have that ready word that you have, God. God, allow him to prepare for us to hear today, God. Oh, God, allow to come out effectively, Lord. Allow it not to fall on deaf ears, God, but allow us to understand what you're telling us in this season, God. Oh, God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We honor you because you gave us another opportunity and another opportunity is this day. So we bless you in Jesus' name. We glorify you in Jesus' name. We believe your word and we receive your word in Jesus' master's name we pray. All righty, guys. All right, I'm excited about this word. It is a word from God. It's a message from God, and we're going to hear from our pastor, Scotty Miller Sr. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you all today. Certainly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm certainly grateful uh, to have another opportunity to come into your homes on this social ministry stream to just speak a word that I believe God has put in our heart to just be an encouragement to the people of God to uh, call someone and to help someone in these trying times and these calamitous season that we have now found ourselves in. And so having obtained help from the Lord, we still yet continue until this day. And we're just grateful to God for all that he has done, what he is still yet doing, even what he is about to do and going to continue to do in our lives. We know that we serve a faithful God. We serve a God who said that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, but God said that he will be with us even to the end of the age. And I don't know how you feel about it, but yes. I'm so grateful for that on today because how many know that we need help yes. in these times? We need help and God yes, has given us the paraclete, the Holy Ghost, the comforter, hallelujah, to come alongside us, to dwell in, inside of us, to give us the strength, to give us the encouragement that we need. Certainly, we're grateful to God for his word because his word is a lamp unto our yes. feet and a light unto our pathway. Where would I go without with the word of God? Where would I be if I did not have the comfort of the yes. scriptures in this season? And so I'm just uh, giving God worship and glory today. I'm yes, thankful Lord. for my health. Thank I'm you, thankful Lord. that I'm in my right mind. Thank I'm thankful you, that God is not just sustaining my yes. family in this pandemic and in this season, but God is prospering my family Thank in this you, pandemic you, and in this season. Now, how many know that all good and perfect, every good and perfect gift rather comes from above? Yes. It comes from the Father of lights who yes. giveth with liberally and without variance. And we're thank and thankful to God Thank you, today for all that he is still yet doing and for who he is yes. in our life. Yes, and so once again, I'm Pastor Scotty Miller Sr. And I'm the pastor here at Arrows of Deliverance and Faith Ministries. And I'm delighted once again that you're joining with us. And yes, we're sir. privileged 
to be able to once again use this social ministry stream where our mantra here at our church yes. is that this is a place that's specifically designed that yes. you can come to find strength right. for your journey. Yes, so we Lord. welcome you today. Welcome. We want you to open up your hearts today. We yes. want you to be receptive today because even as my wife said, and I'm grateful for my wife on today for standing by my side through thick and through thin, through the ups and the downs. I thank God for uh, her companionship. I thank God for her trust. I thank God for her love. And I just thank God for her just being my true and deep gift from above in my life. And even as she prayed, and we're thankful for her prayer on today, this word that God has given me is not a lesson. It is indeed a message. And so I want you to open up your hearts today so that you can receive the message that God wants to give you on today. Yes, the Lord. So that you can have strength for your journey. And yes, so we're in our third and in, uh, third installment of our series where we've been talking about our position and our condition. And in essence, we're talking about who we are as the people of God and our position in God. Yes. In relation to the circumstances that we often face and how the condition of our mindsets will often determine the outcome of our situation. Yes. We have always heard that our attitude determines our altitude mm -hmm. and that is our outlook that will then determine our outcome. Mm -hmm. And so we want to talk about that on today. We want you to think about the position that you're in in relation to the message that God has for you on today. And so in 1 Samuel chapter number 30, it's a very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verses 1 through 8, the word of God reads thus, And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that they slew not any, either great or small, but they carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Mm -hmm. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. My God. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Mm -hmm. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him now, mm -hmm. because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I like that right there. The yes. Bible says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Yes. And David said to Abiathar, the priest Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue mm -hmm. after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And God answered him, Pursue, pursue. for thou shalt surely sure. overtake them yes. and without fail recover all. My God. Good God Almighty. So my thought this morning is coming out of verse number eight. And again, we're still talking about our position and our condition. But my subject today is what God told me to tell you, and that is to change it. To change it. My subject today is what God told me to tell you, and that is to simply change it. In other words, change your condition. Mm -hmm. In 2 Timothy chapter number 3 and verse 1, the Bible says, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. The Eastern Standard Version says it this way, But understand this, we are to understand even now, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to go out, go through the litany of what the news has been inundating us with, with what the news has been telling us mm -hmm. about all the violence in the land, the pandemic in the land, mm -hmm. the social unrest in the land. We are all too familiar with that, which is why we are all at homes now uh, having church when we would rather be in our local edifices. Mm -hmm. And so these are times of difficulty as we all see. Right. But I wonder today whether or not we fully understand the love of God and just how much the Lord has postured you and I to receive his promises, even in the midst of the difficulty that we are facing today and how much he has positioned you and I to prosper, even in the midst of this tremendous pandemic. I firmly believe, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. that God wants to prosper his people. Yes, he does. Job said something in the book of Job, chapter number 30, verses 15 through 17, that I believe somebody that's watching me today is feeling even right now. Mm -hmm. And what he said was, he said, terrors are turned upon me. 
They pursue me. He said, my soul as the wind and my welfare passeth away as a cloud. And now my soul is poured out upon me. The days of affliction have taken hold upon me. He's talking about the difficulty and the struggle and the pain that he was in, the suffering that he was persevering through. He said, my bones are pierced in me in the night season, mm -hmm. and my sinews take no rest. I wonder who it feels like they're in a night season on today. The word of God says to us in Ephesians chapter number 1, verses 11 through 13, that it's in God that we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, God, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory in him, in God, you and I also, when we heard the word of truth, mm -hmm. the gospel of our salva salvation, and believed in him, the Bible says that we were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that we have to remember, brothers and sisters, that we have tremendous promises having been sealed by God. Tremendous. Watch this, in, in 3 John chapter number 1 and verse 2. The Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, yes. even as thy soul prospereth. That word prospereth, it denotes a continual process of blessings, a continual process of prospering in the spirit realm. And so then here, above all things, denotes in this text the posture that you and I ought to always have, watch this, regardless to the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And so I want to move forward to give you a greater understanding of what God is saying to us today is to have a greater understanding of what the word posture then means. The word posture, as we all know it, usually refers to the way a person holds and positions themselves. But I suggest to you today that a person's posture is not only their outward position, but it's a person's internal position and the condition of their mindset. Mm -hmm. When I say posture, I'm referring today to our emotional state. And I suggest to you today that a person's Posture is oftentimes seen in their response to a person or situation. You know, we have often heard the phrase that body language speaks louder than words. Yes, and does. that's because of what's going on oftentimes within the mindset of the individual. Mm -hmm. But brothers and sisters, our posture can also be seen in our response to an unexpected situation and condition. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. Our posture can also be seen and read in response to an unexpected situation and condition. How do we respond is my question to you today when things catch you by surprise. My God. What is our postured response? Simply put, our posture reveals our attitude and it will show whether or not we are in a state of, watch this, readiness now then to respond to do what needs to be done in the midst of whatever situation yes. we find ourselves in. That's right. And not just in good and favorable circumstances, but right in the middle of negative and oftentimes hostile circumstances. Mm -hmm. Those unexpected things that we see happening in our world today. Mm -hmm. And how many will admit that what we usually tend to do when we're under pressure and when bad things suddenly happen to us mm -hmm. is we either respond the wrong way Mm -hmm. or we rationalize and we try to ignore the situation altogether because we really don't want to confront the situation. We really don't want to confront anybody or ourselves or we don't. We, or we want somebody else to respond for us okay. or watch this, we don't respond at all. Right. And the problem is that with that is that when we do that and we don't respond at all, I wonder if we realize that God is the one that has now placed his finger on an area of our lives that That's he right. wants us to focus on right. and confront so that he can get the glory in it in the first place. God wants to deliver us then and make us the conquerors that he has predestined for you and I to be. And so, brothers and sisters, while then we're focusing on the situation today, we should rather be focusing on the revelation that's coming out of the situation. And that is to have a greater understanding of who God is in our lives. Mm -hmm. 
Brothers and sisters, we see how Jesus, he came when he came out of the desert, how Jesus came out of the desert and went straight into the church. The Bible says that it was right after having to endure 40 days and 40 nights of being horrendously attacked by the enemy. And we see that in Luke's gospel, chapter number four and verse number one said that Jesus shows us rather how Jesus not only shows us how he responded to the enemy's attack, but he shows us how we ought to respond when the enemy attacks us suddenly. And the first thing we have to know is that Jesus was led by the Spirit, the Bible says, into the wilderness for the express purpose to be attacked by the enemy. But verse 14 tells us, and I like this verse, verse 14 tells us that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. In other words, God said that some of us today, some of us and somebody that's watching me right now, you're in a mental wilderness uh, and God brought you out in the power of the spirit and he showed up and you showed up rather to walk into your spiritual destiny today and you began to walk in the posture of power only to be knocked back down during the week that you have just persevered through because of some unforeseen event that has literally taken your breath away. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I want you to know today that in my life, I have found out that the condition of my life can often shift and change in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. One minute I'm on the mountaintop and in a nanosecond I could be in the valley. And it's because valleys come suddenly, brothers and sisters, and valleys are unpredictable. They are unexpected. Life has a way of getting our attention. Life has a way of knocking on our door. And when one minute things could be fired, the next minute all hell is breaking loose in our life. This is what I have found out in my life. They are unpredictable. It could be a phone call. It could be a letter. It could be a routine doctor's checkup, a letter in the mail. It will put you right in the valley because valleys just happen. And now we come face to face with our own thoughts in the midst of these valleys. And those thoughts are now infiltrating and plaguing our mindset. And the enemy has raped somebody today. And you feel like, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you feel like you're in a night season uh, because a ship has suddenly taking place in your life. You've been raped of your peace. You've been raped of your anointing. You've been raped of your power. You've been raped of your identity. But this, God says, uh, is the day that you come out today. Uh, and this is the day that you ought to tell the devil that he is a liar. Somebody say the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. This is the day that somebody has tuned in. God has called you to tune into me right now. But he wanted me to tell you that he understands that you are frustrated and that you are irritated uh, and you're vexed in your emotional state uh, and somebody has given up on your dreams and you're given up on your expectations. You've given up on trying to even exceed to do better because of the difficulty of the season and the times that we're in. Uh, but God told me to tell you that it's time to detox your thoughts My because God. your thoughts are the ones that are now turning into a pattern of your life. Your thoughts, they need to be thick detoxed. Our thoughts have to continually be renewed in the spirit of my mind by the word of God because our thoughts have a tendency to turn into a pattern of our life and they become a, method a methodology of murmuring and complaining because of the pressure that we're under. Mm. We're so used to being under pressure, brothers and sisters, and it's because the enemy wants to keep us under the weight of negative emotions. But how do you know that God has taken us from the bottom to put us on the top? God has taken us from the, the muck and the mire to put us on a solid foundation. And Jesus is the rock of Gibraltar. Jesus is the rock of our salvation. No other help do we know but the Lord of glory. But I want you to know that the enemy wants to keep you under the weight of negative emotions, feeling like you've been victimized. Huh? And so he attacks us suddenly with unexpected things. And why does he do that? Uh, he does that so he, we can be distracted from our intended and spiritual purpose. He does that so he can keep us buffeted under the weight of pressure, under the weight of negativity, because he knows that that negative mindset will then turn into a physical state where it will begin to affect our body. We don't have no energy. Somebody's watching me tonight. Today, you wonder why you can't sleep at night. Huh? And it's because we constantly rehearse those negative emotions and those negative, difficult feelings that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And we take on the bed with us. We don't talk to God before we lay down and release those things on 
unto God so that we can get his help because God said in his word that he giveth his beloved sleep. We sleep, yes. And so it's in these times, brothers and sisters, that we got to remember that it might have caught us by surprise, huh? those difficult, unexpected things, even what we see in our world today. But I want you to remind you today that it did not catch God by surprise because he is Alpha and the Omega and he's everything in between. Huh? He's the first and he's the last. The Bible says that the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to God. And I want you to know it's not just the cattle, it's the hills too. Huh? Right. He was there when there was nowhere to be. I want you to know that God is in control. God still yet has a plan, huh? and it did not catch God by surprise, huh? because the enemy still had to get God's permission to come at you in the first place, whatever you're going through today. I want you to know that God told me to tell you and remind you that before the enemy could attack you, he had to get his permission first. And understand this, if the enemy had to get God's permission first, and God allowed it to happen to you in the first place, I want you to remember that God just might be the one who led you to it, just like he, it was the spirit that led Jesus into the wilderness. Woo! I, I, think, I think I lost everybody right there. Just like the spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to do what? To be attacked of the enemy for 40 days and 40 nights. Could God be the one that's led you to the situation of difficulty that you're in right now? This is what we don't like right here. Mm -hmm. But I want to encourage you to know that if God allowed it, then that means that God has a blessing and some power in it for you. God said to remind you today that you can't help victims if you see yourself as a victim. Right. God made you a victor. And not a victim. God said that it's time to, to walk in for, walk forward in the power of his spirit. You see, this is where David was in our text today. David was caught between a rock and a hard place. Who am I preaching and talking to today? David was caught between a rock and a hard place. And you feel like a rock and a hard place for somebody that's wondering what that means. is A, a rock and a hard place is you feeling like you're between... A hard place and a rock. In other words, David had to leave his home because Saul was out to kill him. We know that Saul wanted to kill David huh? because David had the favor of God on him. And Saul was jealous of David because Saul was more concerned about what the people thought about him than what God thought about him. They said, as we know, the word of God says that Saul has slain a thousand, but David has slain his ten thousands. Huh? And when Saul heard that, he tried to kill David. Huh? And so now David's in a place that he didn't want to be. Yeah? The Bible said that he went down to Gather because he had to get away from Saul, which is where the Philippines, the Philipp Philippines dwelt. And out of nowhere, the Amalekites then, the Philistines rather, I'm sorry, dwelt. And out of nowhere, the Amalekites then declared war against the people of God. Uh, the Bible said that they came to Ziklag uh, and the enemy rushed in like a flood and they took everything, including their wives, including their children. And brothers and sisters, when I read this, I, it showed me that the enemy is not just after my stuff. Uh, it showed me that the enemy is after my family. Uh, right. But I came to st tell the devil today uh, that the devil is a lie. Uh, and I decree that no weapon formed against no me weapon. or my family shall be able to no prosper. Uh, it shall not prosper. Uh, and I want you to know today, brothers and sisters, uh, that you ought to say that the enemy and whatever he has formed against you, it shall not prosper in your life. Uh, the Bible happen. said uh, that they went in there and they took everything uh, and that they burnt up the city uh, and they took matter to make matters worse now. Uh, the Bible said uh, that David now hears his own people blaming him uh, for what happened to, in the situation itself. Uh, now I want you to get this piece. David was in the same situation that the people were in, uh, right. but now the people are standing behind David uh, and they're blaming him for their circumstances. Uh, and they said, we ought to stone David. Uh, can you imagine how David felt? Uh, what do you do when everybody's turned against you? Uh, what do you do when the people you thought had your back turned against you? Uh, and you're in the same situation as them. Uh, you thought they were going to ride or die with you. Uh, only for them to now show their disloyalty to you. Uh, yes. What do you do when you have nowhere to turn uh, and nobody to talk to? Uh, right. What do you do when church folk, uh, when church 
folks stab you in the back uh, yes. and you feel like you can't pick up the phone uh, and call nobody uh, because the church folk are now blaming you uh, for the situation that you're also in. Uh, oh, I've been there today. Uh, I know what it feels like uh, to be fatigued and overworked uh, and overlooked and over not overbooked uh, because of people who only reflect on your past struggles uh, and your disappointments in life. Uh, I want to ask somebody today, uh, what do you do when the people in the church uh, don't understand you uh, and ain't got no, you ain't got nobody to turn to? Uh, on, you've got to turn to Jesus uh, in those times, uh, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, if God has started a work in your life, brothers and sisters, uh, I want you to be encouraged to know today uh, that he's going to finish what he started. Uh, I'm talking about position and condition today. Uh, and God told me to tell you, change it. Uh, you've got the power to change your condition yes. uh, and your situation. Uh, God said today is your day to shake that spirit of depression off. Uh, God said to remind you today uh, that you have the garment of praise uh, for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, shake off that spirit of depression. Uh, shake off that spirit of discouragement uh, because God still has a plan uh, and God still wants to prosper you uh, yes. in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, I told you in the beginning of this dissertation uh, that I thank God uh, that he's not just sustaining my family, uh, but God in this pandemic uh, and all the hell that has been unleashed upon our world, uh, God has been prospering uh, my family and I'm grateful today uh, and I believe by faith uh, that God wants to do the same thing in your life, uh, yes. but you gotta reach up and grab it for yourself uh, because it's according Thank to your you, faith uh, shall Thank it be you, unto Lord. you today uh, Pastor you, Wary, I'm talking to you today uh, yes. to reach up and grab your blessings uh, yes. because God told me to tell you uh, yes. that Kabo Shafi this in Hallelujah. my spirit, uh, that you're more than a conqueror, uh, and Thank that you have relevancy Jesus. in this season. Uh, you have a message for the times in which we we'll live in, yes, uh, and move forward boldly uh, in your faith and watch God uh, begin to galvanize people around you uh, to fulfill his purpose for your life. Uh, you've got to hold on to your faith today uh, and encourage yourself. Uh, encourage yourself in the Lord your God, uh, because this is the day uh, that God says you have the power uh, yes. to change your situation. Yes. Uh, this is the day to shake off everything uh, yes. that has held you bound. Uh, remember your garment of praise uh, for the spirit of heaviness uh, that you might be called. Uh, the Bible says the trees of righteousness. Uh, you are the planting of the Lord today. Yes. Uh, that God might be glorified. Uh, you got to hold on to your faith. Uh, David could have stayed in that place of depression. But David said bring me the ephod. And he began to talk to himself and encourage himself in God. And God told him, watch this, to pursue after everything the enemy took from him. Yes. And the Bible said that David got it all back. And God told me to tell you today that you ought to get out of that emotional bed you're in. And start moving forward. I just wanted to tell you today that you need to announce your recovery to yourself. Oh my God. I'm going to say that again. I just wrote today to tell you that God said that you ought to announce your recovery to yourself. Today is the time that you get out of that bed of depression. Somebody else that, somebody else in your life needs that bed. Uh, and you have to be the one that God uses to strengthen them so that they can also take up their bed and walk. Some of y'all been in recovery for 10 years over the same thing, God said. And in the same condition, forgetting your position in him. Uh, and God said, how long are you going to stay in the same place? Crying over the same thing. Crying over that same relationship. Crying over that job you left. Crying over that man that left. Crying over that woman that left you. God said, wilt thou be made whole? Yes. This is the question. David didn't even know if what the enemy took was still alive. But God said his word to David. That they were still alive. And David did what God said and he changed his condition. Yes. Because David reminded his position, of, 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 was reminded rather of his position in God. And God said that you can change it too. Remember that the power of God is working in your life to change your condition. Whatever yes. adverse situation it might be. You have the power to change your condition. And so I just wrote to tell the devil today that he can't have my wife. My God. Satan, you can't have my children. See, this is what you got to speak. The Bible says speak to your situation if you want to change your condition. And so I speak to the enemy and I, I denounce him and all of his satanic attacks in my life. I denounce and I come against and I curse every, every attack that he's coming against my children. 
Everything that he's coming against my loved ones. Everything that he will bring against my church. Everything that he will seek to attack my business. The devil, you are alive today. We rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, I want you to know today that your dream is still here. Your peace, your joy is still there. That's right. God just wants you to change it. And how do you do that? Go after it. Yes. For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fail, we will God said you will recover all. You don't have to sit in social and spiritual unrest any longer. You might be in a situation and you know that it's your fault. I don't know who this is for. Well, God said that he's given you power to change that too. Romans chapter number 2 verses 9 and 10 says this. There will be tribulation and distress for every human being who does evil, the Jew first and also the Greek, but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, the Jew first and also the Greek, for God shows no partiality. Mm. And before I go to my seat, God just simply told me to tell you to change it today. Change he wanted it. me to remind you that there is no respect of persons with God. Yes. And God says, if you change what you do, change it. you can change what you get. Thank you, Lord. We've heard the phrase you, that if, if at first you don't succeed, try again. Mm -hmm. I want to add to that. Don't think of it as failure. Think of it as time to release success. Don't think of it as failure. Think of it as time to release success. Let God move in your life. Change your situation. How do you do that? It's prayer time. Go to the Lord in prayer and get the instructions from God. Yes, Lord. It's prayer God has allowed all of this to happen, this difficulty in our world, so that we can become more like him, so that we can be conformed into his image and into his, into his, his power yes. and his spirit. And regardless of the difficulty in our world, we have to know that God still has called us to be the answer that this world needs. Yes. And the answer can only be seen in you and your responses and our responses to the difficulty. Yes, and when we do that, everything that the enemy think he stole will begin to come, go back into the enemy's camp and take it back for the glory of God. God bless you today. We love you here at Hours of Deliverance and Faith. I pray this word resonate with, resonated with you. I pray that you would like this, that you would share this, that you would help somebody else in their time of difficulty and let them also know that they have the power to change their situation. If you need us, Understand that we're there for you. You can inbox us and whatever we can do to assist you in your walk with God, to assist you in your journey, of course, you can reach out to us and we'll give you strength with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. So be encouraged on today, brothers and sisters. We also want to invite you again to uh, join in with us for Strength for the Journey on Tuesday night. My wife and I will be doing a panel discussion and we're going to be talking about the biblical diagnosis for of spiritual conditions. We're going to be talking about the biblical diagnosis for spiritual conditions. And you really don't want to miss that because I believe God is going to be glorified and some bowed down heads are going to be lifted. And we believe that some deliverance is going to be manifested in the lives of his people. So God bless you on today and know that we love you here at Hours of Deliverance and Faith. And we, again, we are grateful to have had the opportunity that you came to get some strength for your journey. And always remember that I am because he is in Jesus' name. God bless you today, and we'll see you next week.